and once again, thank you for joining me uh, on this live stream. Um, I'm trying to really get a better spot. Uh, I'm not sure if I am visible. I'm in sunny Cape Town. So if, uh, please, if you don't mind, I'm gonna try and just move around just to uh, get a better spot. I've asked for someone's office here and uh, I'm going to be using that uh, for my live session. Yeah, I think this is much, much better. All right, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, don't mind the bottles that are behind me. I made a, a wine tasting uh, event uh, for YouTube. Um, uh, I'll be posting about it and maybe some of you will be able to see it. Okay, so um, yeah, and uh, so welcome to this live session. I am going to just be helping you calm down uh, for your chemistry, uh, obviously for the preparation for uh, this coming week. Okay, right. Now, so the first thing is um, I wanted to say, well, congratulations. You've, uh, you've actually just passed through uh, the first hurdle, uh, which was, you know, uh, obviously physical science uh, in this case, right, uh, which is uh, paper one. Uh, most of you did give us great feedback and told us that uh, you wrote very well and I just wanted to congratulate you on that. You've actually gone through, uh, you know, the first hurdle and in this case, uh, obviously now coming to tomorrow, um, you know, looking at the first paper, um, you know, some of the questions, yes, maybe here or there, they were a little bit challenging, but uh, fairly and squarely, most of the exam um, went, I would say, pretty well. Uh, it was questions that were easy to understand. Um, it was questions that could be, you know, answered with great ease um, in this case. So I, I, I just wanted to say to you, please do expect that tomorrow might go a little bit, just a notch more difficult than it was uh, on Friday, okay? So I just wanted to say to all of you, uh, please make sure that you prepare well. Uh, I tried during the course of this weekend, um, you know, to give you as much as possible uh, in terms of what you need to prepare. Uh, I'm sorry about, you know, the background and all of that. As I said, I'm at a YouTube event. You see, I even have this thing here. Uh, so um, you can see I'm even dressed for the occasion, hey? Uh, so um, so I, I, I just wanted to say to you, please, uh, for tomorrow, as I said, make sure that you really prepare well. Um, I see many people are, you know, posting about the fact that paper two got leaked or whatever the case is. Please don't concern yourself with things that are not in your control, okay? So at the moment, you are focusing on the exam, the leakage of the paper or not, okay? All the rumors that are happening are just a distraction, okay? Forget about that, put that aside. Uh, that is not within your control. But the, the fact of the matter is, there are always um, contingency plans in case there is a leak, okay? Right, now, I wanted to, I'm going to look at your questions uh, in just a few, but what I wanted to do is um, I just want to help you in a sense, um, try to navigate your way around tomorrow. Now, perhaps you are, someone is asking, uh, where are you? I'm, I'm in Cape Town. Uh, I'm at a wine farm. Okay. Uh, I'm at a YouTube event. So uh, hence, you know, I'm not in my normal, uh, usual habitat. Okay. Um, so, so if you are going to write tomorrow, you're going to write chemistry and you were to ask me, um, you know, uh, Uncle Mlu, I'm not ready. I'm not prepared enough. What should I, if I were to advise you on something that you can do and, you know, so that at least you score uh, some marks, I would say to you, organic chemistry, organic chemistry, organic chemistry. Okay, fortunately, I have a long playlist on organic chemistry that I've provided you with. I would say, look at that, look at the reactions in uh, organic chemistry, understand that portion, uh, make sure that, um, you know, you, you understand that part. I see Cassandra is asking about plastics. 
No, you are not going to be uh, examined on that. That's been trimmed out of the syllabus. Um, anything that has to do with uh, uh, plastics uh, in this case has been trimmed out. Okay, right. Um, so what I was saying to you is please make it a point. I mean, uh, remember, by just mastering organic chemistry, you already have a third. I mean, it usually constitutes about 50 out of the um, you know, out of the 150 marks. So by just knowing organic chemistry, you can actually just pass. You know, if you're looking for a level two, for instance, you can just actually just make it uh, for your second paper. Okay. I see someone is asking, uh, Salimata is saying, please explain the eight mark titration. I did this morning. Uh, please just, um, uh, guys, for some of you, you don't use the notification bell uh, on the channel. So please just hit the notification bell next to next to the subscribe button so that you can be alerted every time that we are posting new material. OK, uh, so I did. You can check uh, this this morning's post. Uh, in fact, I did four videos today. Uh, two of them were on back titration on organic chemistry. They were actually nine mark question uh, on acids and bases. So you can li literally check those out and I promise you. Uh, they will really set you up uh, for preparation tomorrow. Okay, so what I was still saying to you is, please just make it a point that you just master that uh, organic chemistry, okay, because really it is, um, you know, uh, yeah, a big portion of your exam um, and it is worth uh, just looking at, okay. Right, now let's say, um, right, so you're done with the organic chemistry, you're prepared for that. Now, uh, many of you tend to look at, you know, sections like, let's say, chemical equilibrium. And the only thing that surfaces is in your mind is the KC calculation. Please remember that chemical equilibrium usually constitutes of about 18 to 23 marks, right? Of which some of the things are applications of Le Chatelier's principle. You must know the definition thereof, okay? You must know... Um, you know, just how to apply the, uh, Le Chatelier's principle. There's a video that I made on, um, you know, Le Chatelier's principle, just using a model of a, uh, you know, a seesaw. Okay, look at that video. Uh, it will explain that section quite well. Okay, right. So please make it a point that you not only just master uh, just the, the, you know, just the KC, the rice table, but you also are able to uh, look at, you know, just the application of Le Chatelier's principle. Now that's on chemical equilibrium. Please, um, uh, I did also show you a calculation this morning uh, on how to use percentages when they've given you percentage uh, uh, percentage values uh, on uh, um, on on the rice table. Uh, that's what you call it, right? KC calculations. Okay, right. So please look at all of those videos. They will really really set you up, uh, you know, in terms of your preparation for chemistry. Okay. Now let's talk about another section, acids and bases. Now, most of you, when you think of acids and bases, you only think of the back titration, um, you know, video, uh, I mean, uh, you think of back titration, uh, you know, those long eight mark, uh, you know, calculations, right? Please remember, back titration is only just one portion. Remember, so when it comes to acids and bases, you'll see that it always starts with the you know, the, the theory, uh, they'll ask about, you know, a standard, uh, what is a standard solution? They'll ask about, uh, um, uh, define, you know, uh, um, you know, an acid according to the Arrhenius theory or an acid according to the Lowry bronsted theory. Okay, so you need to know all of that theory. You need to be able to, uh, to also use the formula of pH uh, minus the log of uh, the molar concentration of your hydronium ion. So please make it a point that you, you also use that effectively. Okay, right. Now, Khalalelo <laughs> uh, says the pressure is getting worse. <laughs> no, actually not. Uh, the whole point to this discussion now is so that the pressure actually gets better. Okay, uh, just for me to calm you down. So if we need to breathe together again. Usa. <sighs> Okay, 
so enjoy the you know if you can go outside and just enjoy the scenery or whatever the case may be uh, because i'm at a wine farm i'm looking at a beautiful uh, scenery outside okay so um what i was saying in acid and basis ladies and gents please 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 make it a point that you master the theory you know your um you know titration question c a uh, v a over c b v b is equals to n a over n b you know that's just for titration okay that's application of uh, the titration uh, uh, questions okay and uh, by the way i as i said i did uh, also release two videos today uh, just to try and assist you with that okay right um so please make it a point in this case when you look at assets and bases it's only just eight marks that are dedicated by the way to that back titration question by the way even the back titration question you can pick out uh, you know some marks you you are able to calculate number of moles for instance okay so if you don't know anything else just calculate the number of moles of the acid the number of moles of the base okay you will be able to pick up uh, some marks here and there okay so please just make it a point that you just don't focus on the one part which is only eight marks and you lose out on the rest of the marks i mean the 12 marks that would be from the theory and just your normal simple uh, um you know questions okay right i'm gonna look at your questions that uh, just now but i see um someone is asking do they have at will they ask about fertilizers uh, and the answer is no remember that's been trimmed out we're still using the 2021 um uh, you know uh, uh, plan all right uh, for content so in this case um you know that has been trimmed out of the syllabus so acids and bases <laughs> someone says what's wusa say <laughs> wusa just means uh, just calm down you know yeah just breathe in and out okay i don't know what else to say about that okay uh, so fertilizers are not part of the syllabus anymore uh, as i said also plastics as well so uh, you will not be uh, asked on that okay so please don't even uh, you know uh, yeah don't even put your energy on that uh, just make sure that you you prepare well enough okay uh, on the other sections all right now um so galvanic cell so when you think of a galvanic cell you know uh, obviously there's a method that i showed you on how to you know just uh, use that galvanic cell you know um the anc or the abc rule uh, you can use that and by the way i keep getting a question uh, people asking me which table should we use 4a or 4b it really doesn't matter okay because uh, at the end of the day uh, both tables actually are representations of the same thing it's just that the other one is written in reverse but in the manner in which i use the number line method uh, you'll see that um, it works regardless of the table that you use okay now uh, i see tiamo is uh, crying about the electrolytic cell um ladies and gents the electrolytic cell is really really mostly theory okay and by the way um let me just say this uh chemistry except for you know the uh, you know uh, stoichiometry you know the calculations on stoichiometry and so on largely most of it actually consists of a lot of um theory okay so what i will say to you is you know there there is some level of you know uh theory that you need to apply when it comes to chemistry so uh, just look out for that okay uh, i really don't want this live to be uh, as long so in this case um i i am going to try and get to your questions in just a few so even when it comes to the electrolytic cell just know your your three cells that you have uh, which means or rather your three processes rather for the electrolytic cell the first one uh, being the process of electrolysis right uh, or electrolysis i don't know how uh, how you want to uh, phrase that um, and then the second one is electroplating and then the third one is um uh, uh purification so all of those theories uh, you need to be able to just understand and once you understand the theory behind them uh, it will help you um what does anc stand for uh maharaj um uh, so anc well it's a party that's in government but i actually kind of use that 
as a mnemonic uh, to try and help you uh, understand uh, the galvanic cell better. So uh, if you can just look at the video that I have, the long format video uh, on the galvanic cell, you'll be able to understand that theory. Right. Okay, so um, now advice on multiple choice, Sandra. Uh, advice on multiple choice, I'd say to you, uh, please watch the videos that I've uh, actually made on multiple choice. Uh, there's a lot of theory that's involved uh, in multiple choice. So uh, there's a way in which you can actually answer that. Just have a look at those videos. And um, obviously they, they will kind of help you to, to be able to master that section. Um, so please just uh, make it a point that uh, you, you put multiple choice out of the way. I would say to you, um, answer multiple choice last if you have to, uh, so that it doesn't distract you you know, from the main parts uh, of the questions. Okay, right. Um, I think um, more or less, okay, yes. Uh, applications when it comes to graphs, you will get a graph, that's for sure, okay? So please, um, on rates of reactions, you might get those graphs, okay? Uh, in this case, um, please make it a point that you use, um, you know, your ability to calculate the rate and, and, and so on uh, when it comes to, to graphs. Okay, right, I'm seeing there's a lot of questions that are being fielded right now. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go through the questions that I'm seeing and um, see how many that we can try to answer. Uh, my plan, ladies and gents, is that uh, exactly at 30 minutes, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, obviously uh, leave you to go back to your, uh, um, you know, to your preparation. Okay. Um, okay, Bonolo is saying thank you for the help. You're welcome, Bonolo. Um, uh, Just Lange uh, is saying I'll answer multiple choice last. That's a very good strategy. Using questions on hydrolysis, uh, using equations rather um, on hydrolysis. Uh, I do have a video on that. Please look at the hydrolysis of salts. Okay. Um, yeah, there is one like that. Okay. Uh, assets and bases, Gugu is crying. Oh no, Gugu is saying, sir, please, uh, between paper one and paper two, which one is more complex? Well, it depends on your preparation. Um, there's a way to understand both, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, it, it just depends. Usually when they make paper one easier, paper two will be more difficult and the other way is true as well. Okay, um, Lisa uh, is saying uh, the chloro alkali industry please don't even worry yourself about that okay uh, that won't be part of the questions tomorrow uh, organic uh, organic chemistry reactions okay right uh, organic chemistry reactions please have a look at that video and um, they can be uh, you know it's quite a lot you know if you think about it there's a lot of um, uh, you know um, reactions but I did find a way to kind of summarize all of them. Have a look at those as well, okay? And find a way to use that, um, you know, th those uh, flow diagrams that they often use, okay? Right, uh, chloroalkali industry, no, it's not there. Uh, is chemical industry coming? No, it's not coming, <laughs> okay? Uh, so you made me love physics, and uh, that's Salimata, you're welcome. Uh, sir, you also consider doing online YouTube lessons where you do a question with us? Yes, uh, that is something that I'm working on uh, for the coming year. Uh, actually, I will be having specific days where I will be doing live lessons. Okay, uh, but there's a way that I'm trying to integrate my board right now so that I'm able to do those live lessons. So for those who will be upgrading next year and so on, they can be able to watch my live uh, lessons and ask questions directly to me. Okay, uh, let's focus on the coming exams. Uh, calculating the total charge transferred to electrolytic say. Okay, um, so the total charge transferred. What you will do is that you will always calculate the number of uh, the number of moles. Um, so usually they'll give you let's say the mass, uh, the change in mass of one of your substances, right? So what you'll do is that you'll calculate the number of moles, but then you go to your reduction potential table. Say for instance, you take for copper. Uh, it's written copper two plus, plus two electrons, right? 
So those are moles. So it means for every one mole of copper, you'll get two moles of electrons, right? So then after finding the number of moles, you can use your, um, your, you know, your, your formula uh, to get the number of moles of the electrons. Now, then you can use Avogadro's constant, okay? Uh, to find the number of uh, uh, electrons, all right? and therefore calculate the charge from that, okay? Uh, I think there is a question that I did on the um, on one of the provinces. Um, yeah, I, I think I've, I've, I've actually done a question similar to that. Okay, so you can look at it. Okay, so um, if uh, Envious is saying, Hi, sir, I have a question. Is there a process you follow for those standard uh, acid-base reaction types? Yes, there is a standard like that, okay? Um, so I've tried to actually make it as simplified as possible. Um, just look at the videos that I published uh, this morning um, and you'll see that there is somewhat of a formula. So uh, in a sense, you calculate the number of moles that are, are, are there initially, right? And you'll have the number of moles that you have uh, that are in excess. Um, then that will give you the number of moles that are reacted, okay? So um, in a sense, you can use, kind of use that. So find number of moles that you have uh, initial and the number of moles that you have uh, that are in excess. And you'll be able to uh, obviously get there. Yeah, so watch those videos and I, and I think you'll, you'll get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Okay, I see there's another question there. Uh, which second large topic, uh, paper two, sir? Um, the second largest topic, uh, I would say, actually there's none, because uh, after that, it's, it's somewhat evenly distributed, right? Uh, so for me, I would really, really say, uh, once you master that organic chemistry, you know, try to nibble on, uh, on, on everything else, okay? Right. Um, <laughs> say, you, you made, you, what? You made, oh, you made me love physics. Uh, it is absolutely my pleasure. I'm glad that some of you feel that way about such a, what is considered a difficult subject. Um, I study hard, but when I approach a question paper, I just panic, uh, please help. Um, I try to show you right now, please breathe, okay? Uh, make sure that you, 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 know, you prepare as much as you possibly can, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, I think there's nothing that beats preparation. And as I said, when you start your, your question paper, you always start with something that you are confident, uh, confident with, okay? Uh, because that, that kind of builds up your, your confidence uh, into answering other questions, okay? Right, um, I see there's another question here. Say, so may you please explain how you increase or decrease the ions in a half cell uh, that will if, uh, affect the EMF, okay? Right, now le let me explain that part a bit. So what happens is that when you make a change, all right, what you always strive to do is you try to see whether that change will either favor the forward. So you, you go to your net cell reaction, your overall reaction, right? So when you make a change, let's say they say we increase the concentration of your, um, you know, of your uh, anode half reaction, okay, uh, of your electrolyte, right? So if that change causes an increase or rather it favors the forward reaction, then in that case, your EMF should be able to increase, okay? Uh, but if that change kind of favors the reverse reaction, then it will decrease your, um, your, yeah, your, 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 your EMF value, okay? Right. Um, are you one of the people who set the exam? No, uh, but I will be probably in future. Uh, so yeah, just look out for it. Uh, hi said, do we know which reaction is favored on the equilibrium graph? Um, on the equilibrium graph, no. Uh, oh yes, yes, yes. So there is a video that I did on the equilibrium graph. So to check which reaction is favored, I would say to you, always look at the reaction uh, that is, um, no, actually, let me put it to you this way. Look at what happens to your products, okay? If your products increase, right, with any change, if your products increase, then it means the forward reaction was favored. 
And if your products decrease, then it means that your uh, reverse reaction was favored, right? So that is how you interpret the graph, okay? Um, so they're asking about, uh, must we uh, know the Haber process or contact process? Absolutely not. Please don't waste your time with that. Uh, that's Zaid. Uh, hi, sir, how do we know which reaction is, okay, so I've answered that. Definitions, uh, yeah, please just know your definitions, okay. Uh, okay, what are you doing? Okay, I'm not sure. Estorita, <laughs> I'm not sure what you're asking me. I can see some of you didn't watch the lessons videos, your questions. Yeah, I, I kind of uh, sense the same thing. Uh, they didn't uh, they didn't watch uh, the videos now uh, hi say how do we know which reaction is favored okay I've answered that one okay I think I think uh, quantitative ex aspects of chemical change sir. Um, obviously uh, you know when it comes to that uh, you know it, it, it simply you know guys if I were to give you advice on how to really master chemistry I'd say to you, please go and watch my videos on stoichiometry. I know most of you think, ah, oh, but stoichiometry, that's grade uh, 10 and, and so on. But that is the heart and the basis of chemistry. For you to understand acids and bases, you have to understand stoichiometry. Uh, in, in actual fact, uh, you know, the application of uh, stoichiometry lends itself across all the other questions on, um, you know, on, on, on chemistry. Right. Uh, all right, there's another question. It says, if you, uh, anonymous man, manua, it says, if you are given the electro, X in electrochemistry, how do you see if it's a cathode or anode? Right, there are several ways in which you can do that. Uh, you can calculate the EMF, uh, uh, sorry, you're usually given the EMF of the cell and you would be able to identify one of them as either being a cathode or an anode. So you can now calculate, uh, obviously, the other cell, okay, the, the EM, rather the E cell or the E standard uh, of the other cell, and then just find it from the, uh, from the list, okay. Uh, I did have a question like that. Uh, just look at the playlist for electrochemistry, and that should be able to help you. All right, ladies and gents, in the next three minutes, I really want to be wrapping up. Uh, let's see if there are any other questions. So please explain the common ion effect. Shoo, um, how do I explain this? So the common ion effect um, is when you add an ion that is common between um, one of your reactants. So for instance, let me take, um, so if I add, I'm just making an example. If I have a reaction, um, uh, you know, let's say for instance, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm struggling to find something at the top of my head. Uh, let's say you've got um, copper uh, plus Cl minus. Let me make an example with that, right? Plus Cl minus giving you something, something on the other side. Now, if you can add hydrochloric acid, you'll see that hydrochloric acid has got Cl minus ions, right? So those are common ions with one of your products because you've got Cl minus. Now, what does that mean? Once you add hydrochloric acid, it means you are inadvertently adding or increasing the concentration of your Cl minus ions, right? And what it does is that it would tend to favor the forward reaction and that's because of the common ion effect. I hope that kind of makes sense, right? Um, okay. How do you handle questions with platinum? Mondly says, how do you handle with uh, uh, questions with platinum as an electrode? So usually platinum as an electrode uh, is used when there is a gas, okay? As one of your, um, of your half cells, right? And the only reason we do that, we use platinum, is so that it provides us, first of all, it's an inert metal, it doesn't react. So in this case, uh, it would provide electrical contact and uh, uh, obviously, secondly, platinum is always a good catalyst, okay? So that is why we use. So do not include it uh, in your half reactions, okay? Uh, when you're doing the um, uh, electrochemistry, unless it's a cell that is made of platinum as an electrode, as a half cell by itself, okay? Right, I hope that makes sense. Okay, 
Um, right. What about corrosion in electrolysis? Is is it still in the syllabus? Um, not not really. Uh, corrosion in this case. Um, uh, yeah, that's that's essential. Yeah. In fact, you know what? Let me not even go there. Uh, just forget about that. Okay. Uh, hi, say How must we must we know fertilizer? No. Uh, please explain the copper purification. Uh, I do have a video for that. Please just watch that. Um, I owe you a distinction. Yes, you do. Uh, Presh, please uh, come back with that distinction. Okay. Um, no, please. We'll see, so let's not say that people will be suiciding tomorrow. No, 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 no. I, I truly believe that, um, you know, there's a potential for all of you to do well. Um, just do what you need to do, okay? Uh, obviously, use these last minute uh, last minutes to try and prepare as best as possible, okay? Um, you know, uh, and, and, and do best. As I said, uh, guys, I don't just publish for views, okay? I don't do that. I publish so that it can assist you. And that's what I've done during the course of this weekend, okay? I've really done my best to make sure that uh, you guys really get uh, the best uh, out of this experience uh, and that uh, at the end of the day tomorrow for me it will it, it will give me great pleasure because then it means that the channel is doing what it's supposed to do you know for you to come back and say look I've got an A or I've, I've been able to do well or I've moved from uh, level 2 to level five you know i've moved from uh, level three to level six or whatever the case may be um, i'm not so much looking for people to excel and get 80 percent. that would be great but at the end of the day i want you to put your best foot forward and make sure that you do the best that you can okay right ladies and gents um it is already 31 minutes um i think i want to close this session um it's really been a phenomenal year, ladies and gents, and I want to thank each and every one of you, you know. Um, if I can tell you about the journey of this channel, um, I'm really grateful, you know, for all of your contribution. And as I did say, uh, please stick around. Um, you know, we are, we are still going to celebrate our 100K celebration, okay? Uh, and I want us to celebrate it in a, in a special way. I want it uh, to be a celebration for all of us. Okay. Um, I really want to wish you uh, all of the best for tomorrow. Uh, please just make sure that you put your best foot forward. Uh, really, really with the resources that are on this channel, you should be able to do well. Okay. And by the way, um, as I did say to you the last time, uh, I know that uh, you do use other YouTube channels as well. Um, you know, Kevin Met Science. Um, uh, I don't know if there are other, you know, maths and science channels. Please, um, you know, all of us are in a collaborative effort to try and make sure that you guys do well. So I really want to wish you uh, all the best for tomorrow. Uh, do well. Uh, we'll come back and debrief. Uh, perhaps later on, when you guys are done with the exam, I will publish uh, some kind of a memo uh, for the um, uh, physics as well as the chemistry exams. Um, but for now, uh, I really, really want to wish you all of the best. Okay, right. Uh, I think with that said, uh, I want to go back to the festivities. Okay, they are doing wine tasting and other things there. Uh, I don't really drink wine, but uh, yeah, I was having a, a grape juice, right? Uh, I really want to wish you all of the best for tomorrow. And I'll see you guys again next time. Uh, uh, Feli, uh, who is it? Fezi Lemabuza says it's chai. Yes, it is chai. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Nah? Shop, shop. <laughs>